What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I hope you like this video. This is your review for Powers, book two, season four, episode one. We are, this is the final season, okay? So everything is going to be wrapped up. Now, I have my predictions on how this thing is going to go. Um, y'all want me to tell y'all now? Okay. So let me tell y'all what my predictions are, and we'll see if I'm right or not. So it's rumored that Tariq and Brayden um, will be headed to Chicago to link up with Tommy. So the way I feel about it is everybody else got to die. Effie going to die. Effie's going to die trying to save Tariq, right? We saw in this episode that even though she ain't messing with Tariq anymore, she's still trying to look out for Tariq, right? I think that's how Effie going to die. Diana might make it. She might. I don't know about her. Um... The other son, what's the other son? The one that's gay? He should have been dead in this episode. I'm not understanding why he's still alive, okay? And we definitely know that um, a Woody gone. We Kane, Kane gone. I don't know who, what, when, where, how, but Kane ain't making it out, okay? Um, Monet, Monet might make it. Monet might, might make it. But anyway, shouts out to TSF. You can find me there every Sunday night at 6 o'clock to doing the reviews for these shows. Um, I'll have their channel linked in the description box if it's not already there. Um, but shot if you're not already subscribed, I should say. But I was talking to Retro uh, CG, and basically he was like, I had to wipe my memory clean of how great of a show Raising Canaan is and put my mindset back in the writing of Power Book 2. Even though it's the same franchise, it is totally different showrunners and different writers. So... I had to do the same thing because there were certain things that I was like, you know what? I'm just going to pretend like I'm not even going to make a big deal about this. I'm just going to pretend like that's how this goes down. We picked up where we left off with Tariq and Brayden running for their life. Everybody is trying to get to Tariq, right? Monet is in the hospital fighting for her life. They think that Tariq did it, or at least they're going to tell everybody that Tariq did it um, because um, Diana and the other brother found out that Monet was the one that took care of their dad. So, of course, they were like, well, she got to go. But the problem is she didn't go, right? Now, I'm going to go ahead and knock out this, this Mary J. Blige situation now. She's, she's dreaming the whole episode while she's in surgery. She sees all the people, you know, she sees um, 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 her son. She sees her ex-husband, and well, her husband, Lorenzo, and then she sees um, Mecca, right? And... Of course, they do that whole, oh, you're coming with us. You're such a terrible person. You're the reason why everything is horrible. Blah, 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 blah. But y'all know she make it. Okay, so can we not go through all of that? Okay, put that to the side because I didn't care. I didn't care about Mary J. Blige. No, I'm not dying today. I'm not going to die. Okay. Then we see um, our favorite cop that's everywhere but don't never get nothing done. Talking to Angela's nephew. Now, I don't know how in the world Angela's nephew got to be such high ranks of the FBI when I really thought, I mean, wasn't he still in college? Was he even working for the FBI? Was he a cop? I don't even remember. But I know somebody in the chat will tell me. Somebody in the comments are going to tell me who what this boy was doing. Because remember, literally, if you look at the timeline of power, it's only been two years. Tariq is like a whole sophomore in college. Maybe junior, maybe. So how did he get to be an FBI agent, special task force agent in three years? Move forward. But of course he wants this done and they're telling him, listen, it's over. It's shut down. It's a wrap. Like we, we just can't do nothing. Like we, we shutting it down. Of course he won't let it go. And he's on a one man mission to get to St. Patrick because of what the St. Patrick's did to his auntie. Okay. His mama tells him to leave it alone, but he just can't do it. He can't leave it alone. We'll get to him later. Now, while all of this is going on, Noma is telling everybody, look, y'all need to get Tariq, okay? Tariq is public enemy number one, and y'all need to get him and get him yesterday. Now, Tariq's only play is to try and get um, the daughter. Because he's like, if I can get the daughter, I'll have some leverage. But of course, everybody and their cousin, they're trying to get the daughter out of, she was in school or whatever. And they, when he rolled up on them, because he miraculously knew where to find them, I don't know. When he rolled up on them, because they were at an airplane hangar, private jet, miraculously, Tariq knew that's where she was going to be. I don't know. Tariq and Braden and their one-man army 
and their unlimited supply of vehicles because they totally totaled this suburban. But miraculously, Brayton had a whole nother suburban Why, when he put up his bins. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I don't know how we got here. But And then Tariq finds a pickup truck later. I, I don't know. But neither here nor there. They are not successful with getting the daughter away. However, comma, Noma now understands that, you know, like, this is serious. Like, Tariq is really, you know, coming for me. Now, while this is going on, Kane got Effie taking him over to Brayden's family's house because he's going to basically make them tell him where Brayden is. And Effie was like, this is stupid. We can't do this. So Effie told him no. Kane jumps out the car. Now, mind you, Kane is shot. Kane jumps out the car and he rolls up on Braden's family and he's beating the brother's ass. And the father was like, listen, we don't know where Braden is. We don't, you know, can you please leave? We won't tell the police you were here. Can you just leave us alone? So Effie finally convinces Kane to leave them alone. And they decide they're going to figure out another way to, to try to figure out where Tariq is and where Braden is. Okay. While this is going on, Diana and the other brother, I don't know, uh, D Drew, 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 that's his name. Diana and Drew... They didn't kidnap Brayden's sister. They didn't tell him Brayden's in trouble and you need to come with us. Because basically, if Monet wakes up, they know they are. At least that's what they feel. Because Monet broke up, woke up. She didn't know who did it. So they spent this whole episode worrying about Monet breaking waking up and knowing it was them. To her not remembering who did anything. There's a little confusion about that. I'm sure a lot of these things I just missed because last season I didn't go back and rewatch everything from last season. So maybe I should have, but y'all bear with me. I'm sure that when we get over on TSF, we're going to fill in all the holes and maybe not because I feel like some of these holes ain't, can't be filled. I mean, some of them I just think can't be filled, but neither here nor there. Let's, let's keep it going. So then once Tariq and Brayton realize that that didn't work, and they really don't have nothing left now. See, Tariq, Tariq, this is where two things happened in this moment that I need to come at you, Tariq, about. The first thing that happened was you were saying you didn't have no money to get out of town. All of your money you had hidden at Stansfield. So you had to get back to Stansfield to get to the money so you could get out of town. We'll get to that in a minute. But see, that's when you didn't learn the lesson. Because your Uncle Tommy and your daddy knew to keep money stashed everywhere remember when when uh tommy had to get out of town and they found and he had money everywhere like he had money at the church he had money at the laundromats he had money everywhere terry why you hide money in one place and it's the same place where you lay your head which is the first place people are going to look for you if and when you need to get out of town which is what happened that's number one number two we have this whole scene where Tariq is apologizing to brayden for getting him in all of this and Tariq is saying to brayden I mean, don't you just wish you were just regular college students? Like, man, I should have never did this. I should have never got in the game. I should have never tried to do all of this. Ain't that what your damn daddy was trying to do? The whole book, power of book one? Isn't that what your daddy was trying to tell you? That you didn't want this kind of problems? That you didn't want this life? Ain't this what your daddy tried to tell you? Now, though, you having all these epiphanies and all these revelations about, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. I should have never done this because this is just terrible. And look at my life now. And your daddy would still be alive. How about that? Moving forward. Hell, your sister would still be alive if you had listened to your daddy. But moving forward. Noma is pissed because she's like, listen, they didn't get my daughter, but they could have. And now she's not safe. And so her right-hand man tries to tell her, listen, let me handle it. Okay? Let me handle it. All right? And um, Noma got mad because he was, you know, trying to be like, listen, Mecca can't do what I can do. Let me be your Mecca. Basically, he was trying to push up on her. And Noma was like, bro, are you crazy? Are you really trying to push up on me right now when my, you know, my whole, my whole organization is falling apart? By a 20-year-old kid? Like, that's what we doing right now? She slapped the shit out of him, okay? Then her daughter, her daughter was like, Mama, look, 
I'm sick of this. Like, first you tell me to leave school. Then you tell me to go to school. Now you're telling me I'm not safe at school. Look, I, I don't know what's going on. And I feel like she gave the best performance of the night. When she told her mama, listen, I get it that you're telling me that it's not safe. What I don't understand is what you're not telling me. That's what I need to know is what you're not telling me. Well, Tariq reaches out to Davis. And Davis tells Tariq, listen, bruh, I can't do nothing for you. Um, I'm sort of in a situation where, you know, I'm my, you know, the bar has opened up an investigation on me. And right now I cannot take on any new clients and my attorney client privilege has been revoked. So anything you tell me is not covered. So I'm going to tell you now, goodbye and good luck. And he was like, come on, Davis, you know, you know, you don't have my back. He was like, bro, this is me having your back because basically anything that he tells Tariq, he can't use attorney client privilege at this point. And they want the phone. It's not like they can't just trace the phone call. Well, around this time, Brayton finds out that his sister has been kidnapped because Drew called him and told him, we got your sister, meet me at the pier, blah, 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 blah. So Brayton is going. And Tariq was like, listen, we need to think this through. Brayton was like, we ain't thinking shit through. That's my sister. We are going. She was, he was like, either you with me or you not. And Tariq is hesitating. And Brayton was like, whatever, bro. And I'm out. And that's when they jump in this second, um, this second suburban that I don't know where they got it from, but okay you know, drive out. So Brayton goes, I mean, so, um, yeah, Brayton goes down to meet up with his sister and Diana was like, listen, I'm, I gotta go. Like I gotta get to the hospital. I gotta check on mom. And Drew was like, she'll be there. Like we need to, we need to finish what we doing. And she was like, no, I'm out. So when she jumps out the car, Brayton's sister's in the back seat, Like, yo, something ain't right. Like she, she feel like something ain't right. She said, let me just call Brayton, which I don't know why you didn't try to call Brayton before you just went with these people. Like, I don't know why you didn't do that to begin with. She was like, let me call my father. He was like, nah, nah, your father said don't, you know, that he, he got it, you know, that for us to take care of it. She said, well, let me call Brayton. And he was like, no. And then that's when she realized, oh, nah, something, this ain't right. So they get the tussling in the back seat, and she maces Drew. So she gets away. At this time, Brayton pulls up. And just as they're trying to get out of there, because I don't know why Brayden didn't just get in the car and drive off, but he was like, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Drew comes bar barreling through, because now he's looking for the, the, the sister, because he's like, oh, ish, the sister done got away. And just at that moment when he about to, like, roll up on Brayden and the sister, he about to shoot, here come this beat-up pickup truck out of nowhere and slams into the side of Drew's car, which, of course, ends up being Tariq. Tariq tries to shoot um, Drew, but Brayden pulls up and is like, yo, get in this car and let's go. So they roll out. Drew is left there half dead. At least that's what we thought. Bleeding from everywhere. He had to climb out the car. Like he literally got T-boned on his side by an old ass pickup truck. Now, while all of this is going on, Kane and went to, you know, underground somebody and he done got the bullet taken out of him and him and Effie have a moment and they get to the kissing and, you know, Effie was like, you know, she was like, he was like, you really care about me. Why you don't want to act like you care about me? I don't know. I don't care about you. I mean, you know, cause of it. Anyway, so they, they done kiss child and made up. Now, while this is going on, Norma done put a hit out on Tariq. She done put a hundred K on Tariq's head and Brayden's head. She goes to visit Davis. Now, Davis, you know, he does a good job of, you know, he got his weapon drawn when they walk in the door. And he's got a, you know, he, they basically offer, listen, turn, you know, Tariq in. You know, I got a good payday for you. And he was like, yeah, nah, I'm good. I don't want your money. And they roll out. They let him live, which was interesting that they let him live. But, you know, I ain't mad at him because I thought, I was like, oh, damn, we're going to get rid of Method Man in the first episode? Shit. Like, that's what I thought was going to happen. But, no, you know, they left him. But like I said, now it's a hundred thousand dollar hit on Braden and Tariq, and for some reason it just occurred to Braden and Tariq to go to Stansfield to get his money so he can get out of town. Cause earlier in the episode, Braden asked him about money, and Tariq was like, "Nah, I ain't got none." Then all of a sudden, he got money over to Stansfield. Neither hit nor there. Braden takes his sister home. Her daddy tell, I mean, the daddy tells him, "Listen, get away from here. You're disowned." I don't never want to have nothing to do with you ever again. You are not my son anymore. And of course he had to throw a bunch of racial comments in there about you done got caught up with the jigaboos and this is where they done turned you into their little dancing monkey. Yada, yada, yada. 
So Brayden has been disowned. He's feeling some kind of way. Tariq is like, what we gonna do? What we gonna do? And that's when they had this bright idea to go to Stansfield, which of course, now everybody's gonna be at Stansfield because you didn't gave them all day to get over there looking for you. So now every bounty hunter in the city of New York is looking for Brayden and um, Tariq because there's this hit out on them. So they go up to Stansfield. They were successful with getting the money, not getting into all the ins and outs, but Effie is, you know, Effie gave Tariq a little heads up. We're up here. We're looking for you. You might want to take a left and I'll try to get Kane to take a right. Um, in the interim, Tariq. Runs into Angela's nephew. Cause out of all of the bounty hunters in the city of New York, the only person that found Tariq and Brayden was the FBI agent. Okay. And they end up getting into a shootout with one of the bounty hunters and Tariq ends up, um, um, shooting him. Now Tariq, before Tariq shot him, Tariq called Noma on his phone and let Noma know, listen, I got all of your information. I have enough to go to the FBI and tell them everything. And if you don't want me to expose everything that you've been doing, call off the hit and leave me the hell alone. Of course, reluctantly, Noma calls off the hit and leaves him the hell alone. Well, Kane ain't happy about it because Kane still feel like Tariq was the one that shot at his mama. So he don't really, really care about what Noma's saying. He'll do it for free. So he sees Tariq on the campus because him and Braden are walking across campus like they don't have a care in the world, chilling, casually walking to their car. Drew who I thought was left somewhere in the middle of a warehouse, he done got to campus somehow. He limping, walking along. Kane calls him and tells him, listen, you need to hurry up and get your ass over here because, you know, we trying to get to read. Next thing you know, Drew is running. How did that happen? Where they do that at? So next thing you know, Drew is running. So basically, Tariq made the deal. If I take care of this FBI agent and that basically protects you and your information, you'll call off the hit. I'm sorry. I know I said that already, but I want to make sure I'm clear with what I'm saying because I had to clarify that. And of course, so Tariq does it. Now, Brayden is standing there like, what did you just do? You just killed an FBI agent. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. But Tariq was like, listen, we good. Until, of course, Kane saw him, and now they, Kane is chasing them all up and down and through um, the school, trying to get him. Um, but, of course, they get away. Kane's pissed. Monet wakes up in the hospital. She don't remember nothing. And then we see this new character. Police agent Don, I think, you know, played by Michael Ealy. He's in the hospital. Oh, I'm sorry. They wrote everything off as a, as a, as a school shooter, right? They said that the guy that killed the FBI agent and Tariq and Braden are giving an interview to the damn police as eyewitnesses. So we made this new character and Braden, I mean, and he is an agent, his daughter, his wife, was killed. Now, I don't know if we're supposed to know who his wife is. I'm going to have to check with the OGs on TSF to see if there's this is somebody we're supposed to know. But he, you know, he's going through whatever he's going through because his wife, you know, he ain't never been the same since his wife was killed. And then um, we see Angela's sister, a.k.a. the FBI agent's mama, roll up on him because she miraculously knew he was in church and tells him that her son has been killed and she needs his help. And he tells her... We're going to get it. We're going to get the people that did this to your, to your, um, to your son. We're going to get them. That was pretty much the episode, y'all. Let me know what y'all think. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.